in a cold, dark prison cell. Somewhere sits the spider. Hi. In this last episode, I'm going to read you one of my poems, uh, one of the favourite ones, actually, um, called The Spider. And it's about a spider who gets a fly trapped in his web and comes down, wraps him up and eats him. But in this uh, imaginary world, the spider is arrested and taken to court for eating a fly. Well, as we all know, spiders, just like everyone else, have to eat. But this is an interesting little story about it, and I hope you like it. Um, I came up with the idea of writing this when I sat in my garden one day with a cup of tea and it was September and there were a lot of spiders around on all the plants and as I sat there quietly and enjoyed the sunshine this little spider was sitting in its web and suddenly a little fly came along and got caught in the web and you could see the web jiggling and the spider came running down from under a leaf like this and it spun the little fly around and around and around and wrapped it up and then scuttled off. Sometimes spiders do that and then they come back and eat their dinner later. That's what gave me the idea for this poem. But I thought this was an interesting way of looking at spiders. Here's the poem. A murderous spider spun his web one day last mid-July. Then spinning done, he slunk away to await the eggs. Order! 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 Can we please hear from the prosecution? Uh, yes, Your Honour. We are ready. A murderous spider spun his web one day last mid-July. Then, spinning done, he slunk away to await that innocent fly. This fly was fleet, and flew well fast, yet suffered one mishap, and thinking thoughts of sticky buns, flew into the spider's trap. The spider felt the line go tight, and scuttled out to see what he'd ensnared by cunning means, a fly or bumblebee. The fly now struggled valiantly. The spider stalked him slow, until the fly did realise... There was nowhere he could go. This spider drew a poison rod and plunged it in the fly, then sneered and waited patiently and watched his victim die. I'll bring the fork and serviette like any decent waiter. There's no great rush to dine right now. I'll eat him some time later, he probably thought. Then wrapped this fly in silken thread, so fine yet very strong, and tied his parcel to a twig, and hummed his jolly song. He stands before you now, my lord, as guilty as can be. This case will last a single hour. We should be done by three. Is that the truth? the judge exclaimed. You ate a harmless fly? An hour or two will do the trick. I shall know the reason why. The spider sneered and cleared his throat, then rolled his beady eyes. Your Honour, there's a thing or two that you should know of flies. The fly can carry cholera and many worse diseases. The fly will eat the very germs what come when someone sneezes. The fly is like a vagabond. He steals and has no shame. A miserable thief, a filthy pest to say his proper name. But I am just a simple chap who loves a juicy dinner, and you hate flies as much as I, so everyone's a winner. <gasps> the judge and jury drew their breath and pondered long and good. They hadn't planned to free the spider. Maybe now they should. And why do you think, the spider said, I have this poison rod? It was given to me in case of need by him that you call God. And Mr. Darwin, so I'm told, did write a lengthy book about the creatures large and small which live in every nook. And in this book it postulates that every living thing is part of nature's grand design, each feather, foot and wing. 
It is a fact, the judge declared, that all of us must eat. I feel this case is full of holes. Pray, sir, take your seat. There is a saying, little bugs have bigger bugs what bite em, and bigger bugs have bigger bugs, and so ad infinitum. A learned man, I see, my lord, you're truly erudite. The spider grinned, and wove his words, and squirmed for all his might. The judge then brought his gavel down with such a mighty thump, that every creature gathered round did well and truly jump. Case dismissed, the judge declared. Court adjourned, they cried. The jury stretched their little legs and scuttled off outside. The spider eyed the judge's coat and huge black shiny eyes. You're right, my lord, I've had enough of dining out on flies, and now this matter's all wrapped up. I must say, one thing's true, that now I fancy bigger bugs. I've got my eye on you. Order! Order! Take him away! Take him away! In a cold, dark prison cell, somewhere sits the spider. Oh look, he's caught another fly. I think that's a little aphid. Can you see what he's doing? He's wrapped it up in a parcel. He's gone back to finish his other dinner. Oh dear, that spider was a bit scary, wasn't he? Do you think he actually ate the judge in the end? Well, this week I've shown you lots of examples of how to draw and paint these little creatures, and even how to make your own pencil puppets. Today in this last episode I'm going to show you a little bit about how I approach creating one of my books, how I go about thinking up the illustrations that accompany my poems and stories. In today's poem, The Spider, we heard how a spider was accused by a judge in court of being a murderer and being incredibly cruel in eating that fly. And we all know really that that's what spiders do. To survive, we all have to eat. But in this poem, which tells a short story, it's what's called a narrative poem. The writer narrates the story, just like a football commentator gives a running commentary on what's happening in a football game. So if I want to put this poem into a book, which I will be doing very soon, it will probably run across several pages, and I would like to put a drawing or illustration alongside some of the main scenes, because although, as I said, words can paint a thousand pictures, sometimes it's helpful to give the reader something to look at as they read, for entertainment, as well as to help describe the scene. You see, I could have just started the poem by saying, there's a courtroom, and there's a judge, and there's a jury, and there's a barrister, and there's lots of people, and there's lots of a spider, and there's a... But that's not particularly exciting to read. When we read poetry, it is a little challenge in itself to try to express an idea or to tell a story, but in a form where you use much fewer words, but each word carries much more weight and importance. So in this poem, I don't give away the fact that they are in a courtroom until the eighth verse. I just started out by telling you what happened when the spider caught the fly. 
I didn't start by telling you he was going to be tried and sent to prison. That would have given the game away. I thought my way of revealing what was going on was a bit more fun. It's a bit like one of those films where you think you know what's going on, but then towards the end, something else is revealed, which puts a whole new twist on things. Anyway, in order to help illustrate this story, I needed to develop a series of pictures, and just like the famous film directors and writers, I use a method called storyboarding, where you sketch out the scenes one by one to give the producers of the film an idea of how the story will unfold. When I use this method to develop a book, I go through the poem and make little thumbnail sketches beside the most important verses. And I thought today I would share that with you. Do you want to see? Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to show you now how to how I go about turning one of these poems into an illustrated book. I'm not going to do the whole thing obviously, but I'm going to give you an idea of how I start to illustrate um, this something like this which is a narrative poem tells a story okay so here's my original poem i wrote a few years ago about the spider and um i've printed it out and the first thing i do is i go through this and i read read it and i think um you know what do i need to do to uh, illustrate this so you know are there any sort of things that might need explaining visually so then I come, along, I come along and I draw a little sketch in the margin that looks like this. And here you can see the judge at his uh, desk. And the prosecuting barrister um, leaning rather lazily against and smugly against the desk uh, like this. So that's a little sketch, so that goes with this verse here. And this goes with the bit where he says, He stands before you now, my lord, as guilty as can be. This case will last a single hour. We should be done by three. Is that the truth? the judge exclaimed. You ate a harmless fly? So this is the scene where the barrister is talking to the judge, and he's explaining what the fly has done. Now... <clears throat> So then I'll go along and put a little sketch next to each one of these, and that's called storyboarding. Um, very often, if you're making an advert for television or a, film, a scene, making a film, you might do something like this. <clears throat> you'll draw the picture here, whatever's going on, and then you write the caption here. And then the next picture here. something like that, and the story here. So <clears throat> you create a series of boards which tell the story. So that's the, that's the way I approach uh, illustrating a poem. And I go through and I think, oh, it'd be nice to illustrate that, and let's show the reader that. Now, I've penciled out a little bit of this already. I don't know whether you can see that. I'm going to go over it in ink now, just so that it's clearer for the camera. But I had a quick look at this last night and went through and did a few sketches. Here we can see the spider, the fly first being trapped and the spider going, oh my lucky day, I've got a nice juicy spider at the fly to eat. And here we can see the spider coming down and threatening him with that great uh, um, rod of poison. And here we have the barrister. This is, you see, this is developed from this little sketch here. That was my first idea here, and I've developed it a bit here. You can see in this one, I've put in his six legs, and the I've turned him into a weevil. He's now actually a weevil, which Basically, links in the, um, the, um, the from Wikipedia here. It's Siphonoptera is the name sometimes given to a short rhyme by the mathematician Augustus de Morgan from his book A Budget of Paradoxes in 1872, and Siphonoptera is the biological order, the classification, to which fleas belong. So this is another bug, the flea. And it says, Great fleas have little fleas upon their backs to bite them, and little fleas have lesser fleas, and so ad infinitum. And the great fleas themselves, in turn, have greater fleas to go on, while these again have greater still, and greater still, and so on. 
Now this was a very important poem. It, um, it sums up, a, you know, it refers to things that were going on in science back in those days, you know, hundreds of years ago, when um, the first scientists uh, discovered the microscope and they could see these little bugs and then they saw that little bugs were eaten by bigger bugs and the bigger bugs were eaten by bigger bugs still which is what happened in the um, previous video you know with the weevil um, the weevil is fed upon by birds and birds in turn are eaten by other things it's part of the whole great food chain the whole ecosystem and our little bugs and creatures are right at the very bottom of this uh, food chain this ecosystem but this poem uh, refers to that and I've known this poem since I was a child and I've always loved the idea and there's lots of images on the internet showing bugs eating other bugs to illustrate this and I thought I'd just do this myself to illustrate it as well but I remember that poem and when I was writing this poem about the fly uh, the spider I was thinking to myself how is the spider going to explain himself to the judge and uh, in fact the judge comes back with these words and says yes okay you have a point we've all got to eat I suppose I'll just read a bit it is a fact the judge declared that all of us must eat I feel this case is full of holes pray sir take your seat you see the judge has started to think hmm maybe the spider's not so bad after all and then the judge himself refers to this poem and he says hmm there is a saying Little bugs have bigger bugs, what bite them? And bigger bugs have bigger bugs, and so ad infinitum. And um, so he, qu he actually quotes that poem. Well, it's not exactly that poem. I've, I've, I've um, woven it around in my way. And the spider then says, Oh, you are a learned man, I see, my lord. You are truly erudite. That means very, very well educated. The spider grinned and wove his words and squirmed for all his might. You see, the spider's using his um, slimy, squirmy tactics to wriggle out of this case. And the judge then decides, oh, the judge then brought his gavel down with such a mighty thump that every creature jumped around, uh, every creature gathered round did well and truly jump. There's the judge and there's his gavel. It's a big, like a little wooden hammer that they use in auction rooms. It goes, boom, boom. Order! Order! He uses it to uh, mark his authority. And uh, here we have the spider looking pretty devious. Devious, that's a good word for the spider, isn't he? It's, isn't it? He's, um, he's trying to find ways that he can wriggle out of being accused of murdering the fly. Is he going to get away with it? Looks like it. And he's look, looking at the judge very deviously. Can you see the devious expression on his face there? He says, you're right. You. And then the judge says, case dismissed. So these are the, <clears throat> the sketches I do alongside um, the poem. And I use the poem in this way so that I can refer to it and think about it. And I think, how can I illustrate that? And then I'll do these drawings. That's, sort of, that's the, sort of the way I approached um, things when I did my book, The Boy with the Saucepan Hat. Uh, I, had, I printed out the poem like this and then I started to do little sketches. Eventually they turned into the full colour illustrations we see here. And then I draw them, do the ink, colour them in with watercolour. And then I scan these pictures into the computer and use software to do the layout for each page and I put the text in here and the pictures. So can you see how how it evolves that's a good word as we're talking about bugs and things see how the work evolves from just simple words if you remember in the video where I was talking about the slug there was no scene it was just black and I was saying slippery slimy simple slowly so we just had these words and that's one of the things that I absolutely love about poetry. People say to me, <clears throat> it must be a nice job writing words and sitting there painting all day and doing illustrations. Well, yes, that's a nice bit, but there's also a lot of other work behind the scenes as well. But the thing that I really, really love about this and what I do is the fact that I can sit down and write and I don't have to have pictures. I don't have to have words written down. All I have to have is this. 
and this. That's where the inspiration starts. And this is where the fun is. When you have a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil, whatever you want to use, this is the exciting moment because from here, anything can happen. Anything can happen. What a wonderful moment to have a piece of pen, a pen and a piece of paper. Hello. Say hello. Hello. Hi. We're out in the garden today, just outside the front of the house. And we've been looking for spiders. And at this time of year, it's hard to find any at first, but I think there's some new ones just popped out. Guess where they are? Where do you think they may be, William? Do you know what? I'll what? tell you where they are. They're right here, behind your head. Well, but I'm going to take a shower now. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> here they are. A host of little baby spiders. Should we zoom in and have a look? There they are. Lots and lots of little spiders. If you blow on them, they might crawl faster. Should we see what happens? Just disturb them a little bit. Ooh. They all, they all down. drop down. I'd like to be a spider. Uh, not me. Because if you're a spider, what, what things could you do if you're a spider that you can't? You should make webs, but. You're literally absolutely tiny. If you if I turn into a tarantula, I'd probably be fine. But you'd still don't eat my snakes. If I was a snake, then I would be fine. Yeah. Then I would be able to eat birds and birds yeah. and other birds. So you don't want to be a spider. No. Which of all the beasts and bugs and things in the garden, which would you like to be best? Um. Hmm. Maybe an ant. An ant. Yeah, because they live, they live in massive colonies, don't yes, they? Yes, they do, they do. And some of them don't even go out to see the daylight. No, so if you if you're an ant, you'd have lots and lots of friends, wouldn't you? Yeah. Lots of ant friends. <coughs> Maybe the entire colony would be your friend. Yeah. Interesting. So that's it. The story of the murderous little spider, and how, not satisfied with eating a few flies, he started going after beetles. Watch out. It could be you next. Anyway, we hope you've all enjoyed this little series of episodes about mini beasts and the bugs that you can find in your garden. I think I can speak for Miss Rhys Borton and Mr Macaulay as well when I say that we've all had great fun making this series. Now it's over to you and the competition. Let's see if there are any budding authors, poets and illustrators out there. If you've enjoyed watching these videos, please watch them again if you wish. Tell us about your favourite bits Think about what made you laugh and what made you a bit scared. Have a think about all the words and ways we've used to make word paintings of these little creatures and have a go yourselves. I started writing when I was your age and I've written for work or for pleasure all my life. I started out writing because I was inspired by my parents and teachers and the books and poems that they read to me. The wonderful world of writing and poetry that opened up to me when I realised that in order to have fun you don't need much, just a little peace and quiet, some time to think, and then your imagination can take you anywhere and you can become and achieve anything you want. Good luck everyone, thank you for watching, and here's the challenge.